uh, internationally as well. That can't happen in Canada. Your whole team has to understand what you're doing. Okay? So, so there's a lot more openness between uh, between the uh, the nurses amongst themselves uh, with the care. They expect uh, they expect to know that if uh, if you're having a problem with one patient, everybody has to know about that. Okay? And uh, or if you uh, you know done something uh, you know that uh, you know you shouldn't have done, they all want to know that, right? And uh, and so that's that's um, um, you know the the making the mistake is uh, less serious than keep than keeping it hidden, right? So so that's another aspect that uh, we find that international students have to get used to is the fact that all the nurses expect to know everything about all the patients say eh? so that so that when they go in if you know if, you, if you're taking care of a certain patient and uh you know and then you go away that some other nurse can come in and he knows or she knows exactly what you've done and, and all of that eh? so so this is what our 12-month course does is it goes through every aspect of nursing all 12 categories and um, and shows you how it happens in Canada, how how they would deal with those situations, and get you familiar with it. So so that's that's leading to the NCLEX RN exam. And to be a nurse in Canada, uh, you have to pass the NCLEX RN exam. And uh, so everything leads towards that. If you take our course. 12 uh, modules and you you study diligently you will pass that NCLEX RN exam so there's usually two uh, two problems that come up the first one is to write the NCLEX RN you need an IELTS score of 7.0 7.0 uh, you know average I think one of the categories reading I think is 7.5 and speaking is, or maybe speaking is 7.5 and reading is 6.5, but it's a seven point average. It's very difficult for any international student, not only Indian nurses, but all international students have a very hard time reaching an average of 7.0 while they're still in their home country. And it's because, you know, you go home, you're not speaking English, you know, you go shopping, you're not speaking English. So, whereas in Canada, you know, you're speaking English, you know, you're, and we encourage everybody at the, at the college, you can't speak in your own language, you know, you have, a, you have uh, somebody from your hometown there, you know, you're talking, we expect you to speak English between them, right, not, not speak your own language. We have students from the Philippines, from uh, Russia, Ukraine, uh, places in India, South America, and if everybody was speaking their own language, then there'd be confusion, right? So we, we expect that everybody in college speaks English. And we also tell you, even when you're out, speak English in the community, right? because that's the only way you're gonna get better, is, is keep on practicing. So, so that alone, um, now ABC Study Links, what they do is while you're still here in India, they give you four months of IELTS training. So, so they're they're going to bring you up to a 6.5, and everybody can attain that if you have you know if you have a good uh, understanding of English now, and it's just a matter of practice, you can go from whatever level you're at to 6.5. So 6.5 is needed to get accepted by us. Once you have the 6.5 here in India, then we can accept you as a student. And, uh, and like I said, ABC Study Links, they're giving free training. It doesn't cost you anything. You don't have to register anything. Uh, you will come to, uh, uh, you know, if there's a group, a certain group, they, um, uh, I think it's 20, uh, then they will, uh, they will uh, you know, do the training uh, wherever. If you don't, you know, if it's only a few people, then they say that you can take the training and they'll reimburse you once you show up. Once you show your that you've got 6.5 uh, and a passing, then uh, you can get reimbursed 7,500 rupees uh, for taking that training. So you go, you go pay somebody to give you the training, 
and then uh, you come with a certificate and ABC will give you a 7,500 uh, uh, refund for that uh, training. Otherwise, you can take it for free with them and you don't have to pay anything up front. You just go and take it right at, right at their facility. Uh, I think here in Fisher, uh, uh, they have, have an office that they'll do the training at. So, so okay, so you're at 6.5, but you still need to get up to seven. So what we do is when you arrive in Canada as part of the course, part of the 12 modules, you're also simultaneously learning English. We give you four months of training in what's called cell band. Now cell band is the alternative like to write the NCLEX RN exam, you need a 7.0 IELTS score. Very difficult to attain. But the alternative they give is you can get an 8.5 in cell band. And cell band is English for nurses. So it's all, instead of a um, obscure passage, you know, from some English literature, you know, out of a novel you've never even heard of, you know, that's what your IELTS test is going to be. They're going to give you, you know, you know they're going to give you a passage and say, okay, what does this mean? Uh, you know, what, uh, you know, and you're going to have to read it and understand it and, and uh, you know, might be using vocabulary that you've never heard of, right? And uh, whereas the cell band, it's English for nurses. So you're o the only sub subject, the only English that they use is English for nurses. So, you know, syringe or, uh, or uh, you know cardiac, uh, you know cardiac care, uh, you know things like that. Artery, you know those are the those are the uh, vocabulary that you're going to, and it's things that you understand already because because you know you've been working and you uh, you have that vocabulary, so it's a lot easier to pass. So so when you arrive, we give you four months of cell band training. And then plus, you still have, you're with us for a whole year. So if you practice your English, you're talking English at the college, you know, wherever you're living with your other people there, you're talking, uh, you're talking English, you know, you're out in the marketplace, everybody speaks English, you know. I mean, even, even if you're uh, living in Surrey with 50% uh, Indian community, most of those people speak English uh, out in the marketplace. So you would, you would continue with your English. So we find that you arrive at a 6.5 with the cell band training and the uh, speaking English for a whole year that you will attain the 7.0 that you need to write that test, right? The NCLEX RN exam. So that's the first issue that we, we've, we've solved, right? Is finances. So our, our course, you know, it's not cheap by uh, you know by international standards. It's um, it's uh, including the tuition, the books, and the lab fees. It's sixteen thousand two hundred dollars, which is about eight lakh rupees. Plus, you need to put up another five lakh uh, to show that you uh, can support yourself. So thirteen lakh rupees, and then you need your uh, your airfare. So, ABC Study Links has uh, has an affiliation or an association with one of the banks. I think it's Savants. 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 They give a hundred percent loan for the entire tuition, uh, show money, and even your uh, airfare. So you don't need to pull even a even a one rupee out of your own pocket. You can qualify for a 100% student loan and um, and go and come. So so finances are not a problem as far as getting there. But of course, you have to pay this loan back. You know, it's not just free money that somebody's giving to you, you have to pay back. So what, what we have done, because um, Canadian Healthcare Academy, uh, we're a, an accredited college in Vancouver. So. What that means is the government watches over us. We're, we're under the government, the Ministry of Advanced Education. We, um, we are monitored every year. They come in, they send in two auditors, 
They go through our books, they go through our, our teacher credentials, they go through our student files, they look at our laboratory, our facilities, and they go through everything. And they check us out and make sure that we're conforming to the, to the proper standards. And uh, if, if for any reason uh, we have something that we're, uh, we're um, deficient in, they write a report send us the report and we have three months to correct all those things, otherwise we lose our accreditation. So we've been accredited for the entire uh, six years that I've owned the college. The Canadian Healthcare Academy is the oldest private college in British Columbia. It's uh, 17 years now that it's been in existence. I've owned it for six years, but it's been accredited uh, for most of those times and all the time that I've owned it, it's been accredited. So what accreditation means uh, for students that are taking the course is that if for any reason the college is shut down, you know, like say, uh, you know, we'll say that even something like uh, there's a fire in our, uh, in our, uh, our college, the college burns down, is destroyed, you know, so now what happens? You know, you, you uh, have come over, you paid your tuition, and uh, 11 months later, all of a sudden there's a fire in the middle of the night and you arrive at the class and there's no more college, right? What happens to your education? You know, in most cases, you would be, you know, too bad, you know, you're gonna have to, uh, you know, you're gonna have to uh, go home, uh, you can't finish your education and you don't get any money back, right? Well, because we're an accredited college, uh, there is something called the Student Completion Fund. So every time we take a tuition, whether it's international student or a, uh, or a domestic student, a small part of our tuition is put into a special fund. And it's not only for nursing colleges, but it's for all accredited colleges. So business colleges, um, you know, uh, hospitality colleges, everything, every student that goes to an accredited college in British Columbia, there's a, uh, they have to contribute to the c completion fund. So if the college is shut down, you know, whether it's uh, a fire or something, we did something wrong, they, you know, they closed us down because, you know, we were not following the rules. You're protected because the Ministry of Advanced Education, they move you to another college that has the same, uh, same course and so, and you finish. And they pay for that, they pay that other college through the completion fund. Now there was, a number of years ago, there was another college, a nursing college in, East, in British Columbia that was shut down for I don't know what reason. But I ended up, our college ended up taking 40 of those students, they moved from that, you know, they, when that college was shut down, they brought them, the government put them into our college and the government paid me. The student didn't have to pay anything. The, the college paid for those uh, to, for the students to finish those courses. So that's the first thing: is accreditation means that uh, your money is protected. You know, you don't have to worry about finishing your course. If you start your course with us, you're going to either finish with us, or if some disaster happens, you'll finish it at another college. But you're going to finish your course. So now. Accreditation is at a high level, and it's under a government watchdog. But we have, after you've been accredited for a couple of years, you can apply for EQA status. That's Educational Quality Assurance status. And we have had that the entire time that I've been, uh, I've been the owner of the college. And uh, you go study, you cannot work at all. But with us, you come and study with us, and you can work part time. 20 hours per week uh, from the day you arrive. Now, so that's how you can pay back that loan. You know, the ABC study links, they're able to arrange the loan while we're giving you a means that you can start paying that loan right away. And um, so, you know, but you're, you know, you're arriving, the only jobs that you're gonna be able to qualify for, even though your RNs now, are gonna be part-time, low level, working in a restaurant, you know, odd jobs, that type of stuff, working in a restaurant, working in a store, you know, a shop, that type of thing, because you don't have a license. You need, even for the lowest level nursing, 
you need to have a license. You know, every level of nursing, you know, whether it's uh, carry, LPN, or RN, you need a license before you can work. So three months after you arrive, uh, we're able to, uh, because you're all nurses already, you're all RNs already, we can train you, uh, give you a, a, a test basically, test your, uh, your skills, and everybody who's an RN will pass the test because the knowledge is up here for you guys and the requirements are down there. So we give you this test and three months in, we can give you the first level of nursing license, the uh, healthcare assistant license. So you can work as a low level nurse uh, and the wages go up. So when you first arrive, you're working in a, in a restaurant, you know, 12 bucks an hour, 11 bucks an hour, minimum wage, but three months in, we, we give you the license. Now you can work as a care aide. Care aides make between 18 and $25 an hour. You know, 18, uh, 18 to say 22 in the Vancouver area. Once you get outside of, you know, if you're gonna, if you're gonna uh, continue uh, working as a carry after uh, you uh, leave the college, you can uh, you can get twenty-five dollars an hour in the in the northern communities. So, so three months in, you know, now you can uh, not only are you not having to compete with every other Canadian to uh, get those restaurant jobs you all of a sudden now you can work as a nurse. Not every other Canadian has a license to work as a nurse, even a low level nurse. So now you can move up on your on your income. You know, 20, 20 dollars an hour we'll say, 40 hours a week, or 20 hours a week, 400 dollars a week, you know, uh, that's, um, yeah, six, yeah, 1600 a month, well, 20,000 dollars a year. So, so uh, you know, you, you can make, in, in your nine months that you have left, you can make, um, fifteen thousand dollars, you know, just just working as a carrier, uh, you know, because you you three three months as a part time, and then nine months at twenty dollars an hour. So, and we have an affiliation with about because we teach that course, because we teach the carry course, we have an affiliation with about twenty or sorry fifty. Um, uh, care homes. So in Canada, because like I was saying, we have universal health care. Every last citizen is entitled to health care. Every last citizen, when they get old, they can go into a retirement home and not pay anything if they don't have the money. Um, there is a huge need for care aid workers. And we affiliate with about 50 so we hear about these jobs. My daughter, who, who's upstairs right now, she didn't show up. She, um, she is going to be the one, the contact person. Uh, she'll be contacting these uh, care homes and uh, whenever they need people, she'll make our students aware that there's a job there for them. So, you know, so that's the first thing. Is, so after three months, you're able to get a carry job, you get a raise in pay, almost you know, double the amount of pay uh, that you're able to do your 20 hours a week. Now, so you're, you're continuing courses, you're working. Now at six months, you're gonna be called in for what's called a SEC assessment. It's a substantially equivalent uh, competency assessment. So what they do is when you are still in India, you uh, submit your documents, all your credentials to NAS, N-N-A-S. And uh, they're an organization, the first thing they do is they verify that these are your documents. So they'll, they'll phone your employer and, um, and your, uh, your, your school and they'll make sure that you know these are real documents that you really did graduate there, you really did work in this hospital, and so they'll first of all they evaluate. That. Then that's before you leave India. Then six months in, they call you in for your SEC assessment, and it's an interview. So so the college we prepare you for that interview. We're not just going to say okay go go do your SEC assessment 
and let's see how it turns out. You know, we tell you, we know what type of questions they're going to ask, what you know, what you should tell them, what you shouldn't tell them, uh, other things. So we're going to prepare you for that so that you do absolutely the best you can at that SEC assessment. And what, what the SEC assessment looks at is four areas. They look at your, your, uh, your credentials and your experience in surgical medical, maternal, newborn, pediatric, uh, child care, and uh, psychiatric mental health. So they decide that, okay, is this person's uh, credentials, you know, have they, how much, how much classroom time did they get uh, in, this, in this area? And how much experience do they have in this area? And so they're gonna go through your credentials and your interview, and uh, then they're going to suggest some courses. And I can guarantee every last international student is gonna have some course to do that they're gonna uh, they're gonna decide that yes okay we we feel that you're a little weak in this area so we want you to do this course the cell bound training so you can attain that so you so you can qualify to write that NCLEX exam uh, we help you with uh, the fact that you can work so your finances you know you're not uh, you're not having to to save up all the money that you're gonna you're gonna uh, it's gonna cost you to live as well as paying tuition and all that. You know you can get the student loan uh, and you can repay it uh, by working for those 20 hours a week while you're studying. Now the rule is that if you study in Canada for one year, you get a one year stay back. So you finish our course, 12 months, you're allowed to work in Canada full time for one year. And, uh, and if you work full time as an RN, so, you, so you've uh, met all the requirements, you've done your SEC assessment, you've got your English up there, you can write that NCLEX exam, get your RN license, and you can work as an RN for one year. If you work as an RN for one year in Canada, you're entitled to uh, apply for PR status. Once you apply for PR status, and uh, once you receive your PR status and you're working full time as a nurse, you can sponsor your, uh, basically your whole family. You can sponsor if you're married, you know, your husband, your wife, um, you, but your parents. I have a friend that uh, that's what he did. He got his PR status and he sponsored his mother and his father and then all of his brothers and sisters came over. And then his wife, then he got married later and his wife, uh, you know, came over and she sponsored all his family, all her family. So we have two families that are, were able to immigrate simply because he came to Canada first and got his PR status. And that's the same thing, that's, a, that's what we're talking about here, is this is a, a great opportunity if a person wants to immigrate to Canada they, uh, you know, the, the person goes over, if you're an RN, you go over, you take our course, uh, you, you, you pass the course, you become an RN in Canada, you work for one year, you apply for your PR, and then you can, uh, you, you know, immigration is, is not a question. So, so that's the first benefit. Uh, just the wage. Can you imagine how much a, uh, an RN in Canada makes? Any idea? They start at the minimum minimum starting wage for an RN is thirty-three dollars an hour. So that's uh, 16, uh, 1650 rupees an hour. And they work uh, twelve hour shifts. They work three twelve hour shifts, then they get three days off, three twelve hours, three days off. So and you get overtime after eight hours. So that means that you uh, you get time and a half. So if you're making, you know, say you've been a nurse for a couple of years, you're making, because it goes up to $55 an hour. They start at 33 and they go up to $55 an hour. And, uh, you know, there's eight different levels that you, you, as you get more and more experience, you move up in the levels. So say you've been working for a couple of years, you're making $40 an hour. Well, after eight hours, you're making $60 an hour. If you work on a holiday, it's double time. So instead of $40 an hour, it's $80 an hour. If you're working on a holiday overtime, it's triple time. So 
after eight hours on a holiday, you're making $120 an hour. That's what, uh, 6,000 rupees an hour? I think, <laughs> if my math is correct, I don't know. $5,500. Yeah, 50, yeah. 5,500 rupees an hour. Yeah, and, uh, and that's just at $40 an hour. Like I said, the, the wages go up to $55 an hour. So if you've been a nurse for, for uh, you know, seven to 10 years in Canada, you're making the top wage $55 an hour, and it's actually even higher than that if you, if that's in the Vancouver area, if you're willing to go outside of Vancouver into the North area, you get a bonus because they're, they're so short of nurses that uh, you can get $60 an hour in, in, the, uh, in the areas. My sister, for instance, like we're, we live, we grew up in the uh, in the northern part of British Columbia, and she, uh, you know, she moved down south and uh, was working down there. Well, she had worked in the hospital in the north area and then moved moved down to the, uh, you know, to the city and uh, got a job in the hospital there. Well, she would come home during the summer and uh, to visit visit our parents. And she'd only be in town one or two days, and the head nurse of the hospital who knew her because she worked there would call her up and say, "Hi, Kathy. Uh, you know, I heard you're in town uh, visiting your mom. Uh, can you come in and you think you could do one shift for me? You know, like I'm really short of nurses. Can can you do one shift for me, or you know, can you do you know work a few days while you're here? So it's just it's unbelievable how how uh, short. Uh, of uh, healthcare, um, this, uh, healthcare providers that are in the north of Canada. Like it doesn't matter if you're off work for two weeks or you're off work for two years. Seventy-five percent of your wage is paid by the government. If you, when you retire, when you turn sixty-seven, you used to be sixty-five years old. Now it's sixty-seven. Um, you get a pension. Every Canadian gets a pension. So the, the Canada pension is an old age security. The two, the two are about uh, twelve hundred dollars a month for every every last Canadian. But nurses, they also get a nursing pension, and that pension is more like uh, two thousand twenty one hundred dollars. So that means that uh, when you retire, you're still receiving over three thousand dollars income every month just because you you know you spent your life working in Canada they give you a pension um, uh, well you get of course being a nurse you get you get free health care as every other Canadian does and I should mention also that students when you come as a student uh, after three months you get the same health care as any Canadian does so for the first three months that you're you're studying in Canada. You need to, uh, you know, you have to get get uh, insurance from India. I think it's a couple thousand rupees to cover you in case you're, you you uh, get sick for the first three months. After three months, you get uh, you get uh, Canada health care. Very easy to qualify to buy a home. You uh, you're allowed to uh, buy a house with five percent down. So your house will say is uh, four hundred thousand dollars. Well, you save up 5%, you save up $20,000, and you walk into the bank, you show them your pay stub, and, uh, and uh, your job letter, that they, they says, yes, uh, this person uh, is employed by the hospital, and you show them the pay stub, your last pay stub, you know, this is how much I make. The bank, in one day, will give you a mortgage to buy that house. So, so that is, is really, uh, you know, one of the uh, one of the big benefits of not only being a nurse, but the fact that you're coming in as an immigrant, you can buy with five percent down, with very little uh, credit of being established or anything. And uh, not and you know as far as the car goes, you don't even need a down payment. You just go in and sign your name and show your pay stub, and, and you'll they'll lend you the money for hundred percent to buy that car. So these are all you know. Huge uh, incentives, I guess, you know, because we're, we're trying to attract nurses. Like I said, like some of you weren't here before, but uh, we're short 60,000 nurses in Canada. There's jobs, uh, once you become, once you become, get your RN, there is no question that you'll have a job. 
and uh, you know, and like I said, we help you uh, before you even get your PR. I mean, sorry, even before you get your uh, pass your NCLEX exam, we help you with those uh, uh, you know entry level jobs as well as the um, the carry job that you have. You know, that, you know, you can work as a carry from three months to uh, to the twelve months that you uh, before you get your uh, uh, you go out and work full time. And if for some reason, you know, you decide, okay, I, I just want to, I don't want to go to Ontario, I just want to study in British Columbia, so I'm willing to wait that one year, you know, there's a one year waiting list for my, uh, for my SEC course, I'm willing to wait it, uh, you know, and I'll just work full time uh, during that year, my, my one year stay back while I'm waiting, and you decide, okay, well, you don't have an RN license, even though you're an RN, you don't have the license to work as an RN, well, you can work as a carry. You can go into the north northern area, twenty-five dollars an hour, and uh, and uh, work as a carry for that whole year. And uh, you know, and it's not a it's not a bad job. I mean, you know, you're you're um, you're doing the low-level nursing. You know, changing beds and uh, and bathing patients and that type of stuff. But uh, there's lots of opportunities there. Not only with the care uh, care homes, but um, there's also organizations that send uh, care aides into homes because you can imagine that every last Canadian is entitled to free health care. Well, um, that's expensive for the government to pay for. So what they lately in the last five years, they've been encouraging people to um, to uh, stay in their own home and they send in a nurse to, to look after them. My, my aunt is a good example. She's 97 years old. She uh, has a two-story house. So her bedroom and her bathroom are upstairs. Her main floor is downstairs. Uh, you know, all her kids are growing up. I mean, her, uh, her, you know, her kids are in their 70s or in their 60s, right? And, uh, you know, she's 97. And so she climbs up, up the stairs to go to bed at night comes down during the day. Well, you know, she can't run up to the bathroom, so they've set up a temporary, uh, you know, commode, we call them, downstairs. So the carry comes in, you know, has to do the dirty job of emptying the commode, helps her uh, maybe have a sponge bath, um, you know, does some exercises with her, uh, you know, has a cup of tea with her, maybe even help her make breakfast, that type of thing. One hour, she's in, she's out. She moves on to the next patient. Moves on to the next patient. She might see the carry might see uh, five, six patients in a day. Uh, put together a program that takes you right from being an RN in India, right to being an RN in Canada, um, and uh, which puts you on the path to immigration. And uh, you know, it's. It's the, uh, the best and simplest way. There's only two ways to get to Canada and become a citizen. One is through a student visa. The other is through direct, uh, direct uh, immigration. You can't get a work visa for Canada. They, they don't, they're not giving out any uh, work visas, so they're not hiring uh, RNs in Canada directly out of India. But you can go one of these two ways. Immigration, it takes it takes, uh, and I'm, you know, ABC Study Links is more of an expert on immigration than I am, but, but from my understanding, it can take five or six years, and you have to put up ten thousand dollars per person that wants to immigrate, and you have to leave it in the bank for two years, and then even after all that long time, there's only a fifty percent success rate for immigration. So immigration is a very difficult and it's not always successful way of getting to Canada. The student visa, one year, and you get a one year stay back, you work at, on your one year stay back as a registered nurse, and you qualify for immigration. So in two years, you can be a Canadian citizen through the, uh, through the uh, student visa method. So it's far superior to do that. You know, rather than waiting in India, and uh, and uh, you know uh, you know hoping that uh, that you're going to get uh, your your uh, immigration uh, uh, application approved. 
you know, you can already be in Canada and, uh, and uh, you know, have it. By the time you even hear about it here, you can, uh, you can have it there. So, so I know everybody, uh, you know, came in at different times. So is there any questions uh, that you'd have for me about anything? <coughs> so we got